Have you tried screen printing multiple shirts but only been able to make one or two good prints before your design just doesn't look good anymore? This can be really frustrating. Hey, I'm Jennifer with Pigskins and Pigtails. Here on my channel, I teach how to get started screen printing at home. One of the tricks I use to get set up quickly is cutting my designs with a vinyl cutter and using vinyl on my screens. This can be done without any chemicals or a dark room. And to keep things just as easy to clean up, I like using water-based screen printing inks. While these inks are safe and easy to clean up with just soap and water, there is one downside to screen printing with water-based inks. These inks are gonna dry quickly, which is great when it comes to finishing your shirts, but it can be frustrating when this happens during the printing process. In this video, I'm gonna share five tips to help you print hundreds of shirts successfully with water-based inks. After screen printing your first shirt, you lift the screen and you can immediately place it on your next shirt and repeat the process. This works really well if you have all your shirts spread out and can work this quickly, but if it takes you a little bit more time in between shirts or you're making shirts with multiple colors and your screens are gonna be set aside for a bit, this is when the ink will start drying. As the ink starts to dry, you may notice the consistency changes a little. The ink starts to get a little stickier or when you make your next print and lift the screen, you may notice spots where the ink is getting clogged. These are signs that your ink is drying in your screen, so here are my tips to prevent this from happening. First, avoid using fans or having AC units blowing near your screens. It may be tempting to have a fan or air conditioning blowing on you as you work, especially if you're working on a multicolor project and using a heat gun or flash dryer. These are gonna make your room especially hot and you're gonna be tempted to set up a fan. However, this airflow will cause your ink on your screen to dry even faster. Number two, keep scooping fresh ink onto the screen. As you print, make sure you're continuously scooping fresh ink onto the screen. Adding new ink keeps it wet and prevents the screen from drying out. Trying to be conservative with your ink and not leaving much on your screen will actually cause it to dry faster. You can always scoop up any extra and save it in the end, so be generous with your ink while you're printing. Number three, get set up and work efficiently. Have all your shirts lined up and ready with all the supplies you need close by. If you're printing on your table, put parchment paper inside all of your shirts ahead of time. Also, check out the section in my beginner's course that talks about accurate screen placement. This trick will help speed up your process of lining up the screen on each shirt. Another really helpful tool to make your process even more efficient is using a screen printing press. Instead of putting parchment paper inside each shirt, you can thread your shirt on the press. The press holds your shirt and screen in place. This ensures my design prints accurately on my shirt each time, which in turn speeds up my process because I'm not spending time trying to decide where to put the screen on each shirt. Plus, having a screen printing press is a huge help when it comes to printing a bunch of shirts because if the ink starts to dry and you lift the screen to find a spot that didn't print all the way, you can lower the screen back down and squeegee over it again. The screen lines up in the exact same spot each time, so you can keep adding ink until the design looks perfect. If this happens when you're working without a press, you aren't able to line the screen back up to add more ink. So this press is really gonna save you a lot of frustration and messed up shirts in the long run. Number four is flooding your screen between prints. This next step is critical whether you're using a press or not. After completing a print, if we were to leave this screen off to the side while we get our next shirt ready, there are little bits of ink left in the screen that will dry very quickly and clog the screen. To give ourselves a little time to get the next shirt in place, squeegee one coat of ink across the screen. This is called flooding, and instead of leaving the mesh open, it now has wet ink over the design, and it will give us just a little more time to get our next shirt ready. Even with these first four tips, when working on bigger projects, maybe you're doing multiple colors on your press or you need to make a bunch of shirts, you might be using a heat gun or a flash dryer to dry your colors in between, which is gonna cause the ink to dry much faster. This is where my final tip comes in. I recently discovered that there is an additive that you can use in your water-based inks to slow down the drying process. If you're using speedball inks, their additive is this one called the Screen Retarder Base. 
It can be used with both their acrylic and fabric inks. If you're using the Green Galaxy inks like the Comet White ink that I use, their additive is this one called the Compound ND. I'll link to both of these below. To use these, you'll mix a small amount of the additive to your water-based ink. Speedball says you can use up to 25% by volume. Compound ND says two to 3% with a max of 5%. So if I measure out just barely over seven ounces of the Green Galaxy Comet White ink and add in 2.5%, that would be 0.176 ounces. Using a really precise scale is important here. I'll link to this one below. Mix that together really well. I haven't noticed these additives changing the color or consistency of the inks. So now we can use this to screen print. I'm setting a timer for this just so you can see how long the ink lasts in the screen. I'm gonna take my time printing this to really put the additive to the test. I start out by squeegeeing it over a couple times Then I'm gonna take a look at the print. And then I can lower the screen back down to add another coat of ink. I'm flooding it in between. Now this looks pretty good. And from the camera, the white probably looks pretty bright. But in person, I can see a little bit of the blue shirt coming through, so I'm gonna use my flash dryer. I'm gonna make sure that it's turned on and heated up, and I'm gonna pull that over the shirt to dry the first layer of ink. Then I'm gonna add another layer of ink on top, and that's gonna make the white even brighter. This flash dryer puts off a lot of heat, and this can cause the screen to start to dry out really fast. So this is a good test to see how well the additive is gonna work in extending the drying time of the ink. Now I'm gonna speed up the video and then I'll check back in on the time and status of the screen. As you can tell, some of the lettering on this design is pretty small. So if I were to print without the additive and I were doing a bunch of shirts, I might lose some of those little spots between the A and the O if the ink were to get sticky. But as you can see, the additive is doing a really good job. It's holding up perfectly so far. So at 21 minutes, you can see there's still no issues with the ink and it's printing nicely. It's still looking really good after 30 minutes, and again after 40 minutes. It took me just over 45 minutes to print 15 shirts with flashing in between. This simple additive was really a game changer, but to put it to the test, I let this screen sit here unused, which I normally would not do. I left it for an hour. Now let's see what happens. When I try to print, you can tell the ink has really dried. But again, something I don't normally do is change direction with my squeegee. If I push the squeegee really hard, I can get that dried ink to go through. And just pushing it a few times, I can get it cleared out. And then I can squeegee like normal. And check it out, I'm back to printing like normal again. My vinyl is still stuck to the screen really well. With some fresh ink, I could keep printing. So these are definitely something to try if you're taking on a big project, but keep in mind that using additives will change your curing process a little bit. If you're allowing your shirts to air dry before heat pressing them, you will likely need to allow more time for them to air dry. Whenever you're using a new product like this, it's always a good idea to do a wash test. Print, dry, and cure a few test shirts, then wash them a few times to see how they hold up. If they don't fade in the wash, you know your curing process is correct. 
Water-based ink offers a lot of benefits from the ease of cleanup to the soft feel it leaves on the shirt. By following these tips, you can reduce the risks of clogs and uneven prints and still enjoy the results you get with water-based inks. I hope this video helps make your next project much smoother. If you're still having trouble with your screen printing process, I offer additional support on my website. You can contact me using the links below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And here's another video I'd recommend watching next.